Hello, I'm Claudio Jaffe, the principal cellist of the Palm Beach Symphony. Have you ever wondered how the bow really works as it meets the string and produces that beautiful sound that we're so accustomed to and we so cherish? Uh, well, it's easy enough to understand. When you pluck the string, it makes a sound. Well, why does it do that? Well, we pull on it, there's a certain amount of tension on the string, and then when they let go, it vibrates. But my question is this, what happens when the bow touches the string while it's vibrating? It stops vibrating. So I've always wondered, how come as we pull the bow and we make a sound, the sound continues even though the bow is constantly touching the string? So we're going to work on that. We're going to talk about how that works exactly. And, and we're going to figure out some of the implications of that and how it applies to our work on sound control and the three different ingredients of great sound, which is, of course, the speed of the bow, the, uh, the weight of the bow, and the placement of the bow in relationship to the bridge. So ready? Here we go. Many years ago, I stumbled into this video on YouTube that, uh, that shows the violin string in slow, super slow motion. So I'm going to share that with you and, um, and I'm going to try and point out some of the things that I want you to notice uh, while you watch this video. So, so as you'll see, the string vibrates uh, up and down and side to side. So what's really happening is that the rosin on the bow catches the string, pulls on it, Eventually, there's so much tension that the string escapes, very much like a pizzicato. And then, once that string has escaped, the bow catches it again and pulls it once more, and then it escapes yet again. And that process repeats itself over and over again. As a matter of fact, since that is a G string, the G is, a, is about 200 uh, hertz, and which means that what you're seeing happening there happens 200 times per second. And that gives us the impression of the sound G. So a number of other things I want you to notice as you watch. For example, notice that kink that goes up and down the string. Also, notice how much the string displaces itself, how far uh, it displaces from the center. So as you get closer to the center of the string, it goes much, much wider. And of course, because it's fixed on the bridge, it's not terribly wide at all as you're close to the bridge. Now, you should be able to see the displacement of the string even in normal speed. Let me show you my C string. If I play on it. You'll notice that right about here, in the center of the string, is where the movement is at its widest level. Another important factor related to the string length that's vibrating has to do with just where on the cello you're playing. Because as we play higher and higher notes, the string length that is actually playing at the time gets shorter and shorter. Therefore, the, we need to worry about proportionality of your bow placement in particular. So for example, if this is an ideal sound right here, For the open string, while the entire string is vibrating, it's not going to work if I'm playing a note way up here. Let me place the bow more or less in the same spot, and I can't really make the sound. But if I get my bow a lot closer to the bridge, then the sound is good. So why does that happen, and what was I talking about in terms of proportionality? Well, let's make some rough measurements, and then you'll be able to understand that better. This string is about 27 inches long, all right about here, which is maybe two inches in. So to divide my 27 inches by two, so that's about 13, about one thirteenth of the string. But if I'm gonna play a note that's this high, so now I'm just dealing with seven inches of string. So now I'm gonna divide seven by 13, to get 0 0.07, and that's less than an inch. That means my bow will need to be right about there. Seven inches, less than an inch, here it goes. Very nice. So now, let's talk about how that affects the three ingredients that I mentioned, the three factors that affect the quality of sound. First, let's deal with the speed of the bow.
When we move the bow very quickly, if you think about the video that you just watched with the slow motion string, that means that we're pulling the string as far as possible, very, very quickly before the bow is able to grab the string again. That gives the greatest amplitude. It makes the string vibrate at its widest form. It has the most amount of energy. And after all, energy is what sound really is, energy traveling through the, through the air. So as we use the energy of our muscles to move the bow, the bow catches the string, pulls on it a number of times per second, and that produces a, a, a louder sound with more energy. Now if my bow is moving more slowly, the sound is going to be softer. I'm not putting as much energy into the sound or back to the video. I'm not pulling the string quite as far as I would if I was moving the bow a lot faster. But the speed of the bow uh, needs to have a relationship with the other factors as well. For example, the weight of the bow. Now, what does the weight do? If we think back on that video, what the weight of the bow is really doing is allowing for more or less friction between the rosin and the string. So if I put a lot of weight on the bow and I get a sound somewhat like this. Lovely, right? Well, when I get a sound like this, think about the video again. What's really happening? I'm putting a lot of weight in the bow. I'm moving my bow very slowly, and therefore the string doesn't get a chance to escape before it gets caught again. So all we're really hearing is the friction of the bow on the string without any of the beauty of the sound. Now conversely, if I move my bow much too fast and I use very, very little weight, we get this whistly, airy sound. Now, what's really happening is that because there's not enough friction between the, the rosin and the string, my bow isn't catching the string often enough to produce a nice sound. And finally, let's talk about the bow placement. As we discussed before, the string will move farthest side to side as it gets closer to the center. And it moves not very far as it's close to the bridge. So what's the implication of that? Well, because the string is vibrating at the same speed all along, so let's say it's 200 beats per second in this case, it's 200 times per second that it needs to travel a very, very short distance close to the bridge, but 200 times per second it needs to travel a much wider distance towards the middle of the string. Therefore, the actual speed of the string in the air is faster as you get closer to the center of the string and of course slower as you get closer to the bridge. So now that we start combining those three factors, let me show you some things that can happen. For ex and you should try this yourself so that you can discover for yourself exactly what that does. So let's say that I want to play near the fingerboard. Well, near the fingerboard, the string is traveling at a faster speed, right? Because I'm away from the bridge. Therefore, my bow needs more speed. Also, there's a lot less tension on the string because I'm farther away from the bridge. So I don't want to put too much weight. So I need a lot of bow speed. If I use too little bow speed, the note will choke. Not very pleasant sound. So as you get closer to the fingerboard, we need more speed, we also need less weight. Let me show you. A lot of speed, near the fingerboard, a lot of weight. Again, the sound is choked and uncomfortable. Now let's go to the other extreme, let's get close to the bridge. Now, I can now move my bow very, very slowly, and I also will be capable of using a lot of weight because there's a lot of tension there. But that doesn't mean I cannot play piano. Or forte. Or even louder. So, hopefully that will give you some food for thought and some food for experimentation as you sit and you explore 
how those three factors of sound production relate to each other, the bow speed, the bow weight, and the placement of the bow in relation to the bridge. And uh, please study that video carefully uh, so you can understand better and better the way that the string actually works from a physical perspective. And uh, enjoy your discoveries of cello sound.